Good evening. Welcome to our Saturday service. <laughs> Are you ready to praise our God? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all rise. We bless you, Father God. We are always and forever will be grateful for all that you have done for us, Lord. All right, we're going to start with, by singing the doxology. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures in Never has, never will, cause my God 
Thank you, Lord. Our life alone is a testimony to your goodness, Lord God. Hallelujah. So you are more than enough. More than enough for us, Lord. And I can call you Abba Father. Provider, healer, shelter, deliverer, my help in times of need. You give me peace of mind and heart. You keep me safe in your arms of love. No need to worry, no need to fear. You're everything. And unto you I say, you are more, cause you are more, more, more than enough, so much more, more, so 
We just thank you so much for tonight. Lord, we thank you for this time that we could come together and we could worship you, Father. You are more than enough, more than enough if we just look to you for what we need, Father. You're our provider. You're our healer. And we thank you so much for that, Father. We thank you that every promise is true. 
and it never changes. And, then, and we thank you for that. And Lord, I just thank you for tonight. I thank you that hearts are receptive to receive the word of God. They'll go deep into their heart. It'll minister to them. It will give them what they need to get through what's coming up this week. And we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome, everyone. So good to see everybody. Um, so just to have a few announcements, um, we're here obviously every Saturday, so if you can join us, we'd love to see your smiling faces and those that you watch us on YouTube, we're so glad you tune in. So why don't we give them a hand clap and let them know we love them and we're glad they're tuning in. Um, also on Wednesdays, we have a service, so if you can come on Wednesday, I encourage you to come. Um, get fed the Word of God in the middle of the week, and it'll help you get through the rest of the week. I guarantee you that. Um, also, um, we have praise and worship the first uh, Wednesday of every month, and we just had that. So if you weren't able to be here, go ahead, go on YouTube and listen to it. That's always a blessing. And then we have Kids Church on Wednesday, three and a half through sixth grade. We have our Jesus Pieces youth group um, on Wednesdays. So lots of things going on on Wednesday. And then um, coming up, we have the Epic Ministry. That's August 21st. So mark your calendars if you're 50 years or older. And then if you're a man, mark your calendars for August 26th at 7 p.m. We have the men's meeting. So we also have prayer two times a week. We have Friday at 10 a.m. here at State Street, and we also do it on Zoom on Saturday, and you can get that information online or on the, in the bulletin. But we started doing our prayer requests and praise reports again. So um, if you fill this out, you can put it in the offering bucket. If you're listening online, you could send us an email. And um, we'd like to be able to pray over your specific prayer requests. There's also a line on here, what scripture are you standing on? So it's always good to know what you're standing on and, you know, when you're believing God for something. And these songs, if you want, looked at the words, they were awesome. I mean, God does never, ever change and his promises never change. So um, be sure to put that down. And then we'd love to hear your praise reports. So um, feel free to get that and you can drop it in the offering bucket. And then we also have our monthly Bible reading. If you didn't get that in the mail, um, we have some extra ones out in the lobby, or you can also call the church and have them send it to you. And, and we're in a Isaiah right now. So um, try to feed yourself every day and then try to come when you can come. So I know you'll be blessed. So get ready to receive. I know God's always got a good meal for us. So um, right now I'd like to welcome up Rachel for tonight's tithes and offerings. So it's my privilege and pleasure to be receiving the offering tonight, and as as we do so, I just want to really encourage us just to think about um, what is in your hand, and sometimes, you know, what's in our hand in the sense of when we're thinking about tithes and offerings, how much money there's, you know, no matter how much we've got, sometimes it just feels like maybe there's quite not quite enough for all the things that we might want, but. God is, is faithful and he is our provider, so it, it will be enough when we're aligned to him. And sometimes sometimes that's actually the trouble. It's not that God's not providing, it's actually are we being faithful stewards and how are we how are we using what's in our hand? And Second Peter one three says, Because by his power he has given us everything necessary for life and righteousness. So God is our God is our source and he knows exactly exactly what we need and sometimes it is a, a small seed a small thing that we've got in our hands Zechariah 4 10 says do not despise these small beginnings so just because you're starting out small doesn't mean that small can't become big and if you remember a few weeks ago when I was talking about my gardening and I'll touch on seed again because it's probably a passion of mine but the fact that seed multiplies one tiny seed and you think about the scripture that talks about the the mustard tree which I must actually google what a mustard tree is because I think of mustard as little greens that I might have in salad as opposed to a giant thing but but any you know any plant in relation to the size of the seed it came from is big and then what it produces and the multiplication of seeds that then come from that is is always a um, quite a growth thing so um, but one of the things I just really wanted to touch on is the Lord put in my put in my heart that what do you have in your hand as I read about um, 
read about that in Exodus 4.2. God asks Moses, what do you have in your hand? And it was a shepherd's staff, which was possibly back in those days not much more than a pretty much a glorified stick <laughs> used to guide the sheep, used to grab them, smack them, whatever. Sheep are coming from a sheep farm. Sheep aren't the most... Um, obedient or intelligent animals sometimes and sometimes a little bit of a poke is going to help them get along to where you want them to go but the question is what are you are you willing to take what's in your hand and give it to the Lord to work with and in this case God said what what is in your hand Moses and he you know he said I've got my my staff and then God gave him instructions he said throw it on the ground and it turned into a turned into a snake and then he said pick it up again even though he's kind of running away from the snake because it turned into something quite scary for him. But God followed the instruction and it became a rod for miracles. It was no longer Moses' staff. It was God's staff and God was using it for mighty things. He he bought the plagues with the staff. He used those in, in those actions. He bought water out of a rock and even parted the Red Sea. So that glorified stick became something really, really important as Moses was willing to use, to use that. And... Um, just, but it was really key that, that Moses was being obedient and following and hearing the instructions of the Lord and, and following them. So I guess the challenge and the question for us today, are, are we following, are you following and obeying what you have in your hand today? What have you got in your hand? And then what is the Lord asking you to do with it? And if you don't know, I encourage you to ask him, seek him. Whether it's about your finances, we all have time in our hands. Sometimes we let time slip through our hands, but try not to, to let it slip through our hands. What are our resources? Sometimes it's you know, there's lots of things that we do have in our hands that we might even not, not recognize that are in there. So, um, you know, when, when Jesus fed the 5,000 with the five loaves and the two fish, it, that boy hadn't released what was his in his hand, which seemed like nothing compared to the number of people around him. But if he hadn't released what was in his hands in that small beginning, the crowd wouldn't have been fed and there would have been people hungry. So it's another example of something that seems so tiny and so insignificant relative to the problem. But it gave it to Jesus and Jesus made it. It made it into something more mighty. So maybe your small seeds, um, you know, they seem small, but they can be transformed into much. So just remember that our giving, our doing of anything and obedience to the Lord is um, in his word and his call our seeds. So, But without planting them, they can't be transformed. So if we keep them in our pocket, we keep them hidden away, we keep them for ourselves, we can't get that multiplication. So just yeah, really challenge you today. Just think about what have you got in your hand and what does the Lord want to transform it into and, and use it. And as we sow our tithes and offerings today, sow that in faith that the Lord's going to multiply. And he might not multiply it back in money, but God is our provider and our source and he uses that to bring something else to you. So thank you, Lord, for your word and thank you for the seed that you give us. Thank you for what's in our hands, Lord. We ask that you would help us to be cognizant of what it is that's in each of our hands father god and help us to use it for the way you wanted to use it lord god sometimes it's very easy to think it's mine it's mine it's mine but lord god truly it's from you which means it's yours and you've given it to us as stewards help us to be wise stewards with every resource you give us whether it be finances time whatever lord god it is help us to use it and give it to you to hold it lightly lord god that you can use it and you could transform it to bless others, Lord God, and to make our lives richer because you are using us as a tool in your hand. We bless your name, Lord God. We thank you. You are our source and provider, Lord God. We love you and we thank you that you do not leave us wanting, Lord God. You give us more than enough, Lord, and you are yourself. You are more than enough, as the song said in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Rachel. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. And I'm going to prove it to you. <laughs> I've got some scriptures that we're going to look at that God is good. Man, he's real good. And he, you know what the good part about that is? He loves you and me. <laughs> and he's our father. And a father and a mother, but a father wants to be good to his children. See, we're, we're conditioned many times in the wrong way. But God's a loving father that wants to be good to us. He longs to bless his children. He longs to do good things for you and me as his children. God loves you. 
He loves me too. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Before we get started, we're going to pray. A uh, couple things to pray about here. Number one, uh, pastor is on his way to visit his daughter who is having a baby. And uh, as far as I know, the baby is still intact, still in the oven. <laughs> Baby's still in the oven, <laughs> as far as we know. But uh, they're on their way to Tulsa, and uh, that's a real blessed thing. And we're going to pray for them. Um, we already have, but we're going to collectively as a body pray for them and their safety. And then for the delivery of a beautiful child and uh it's, it's all good. And then also I want to pray for the Sapita family. Today uh, was uh, the w funeral wake, whatever, for uh, Randy Sapita's father. And uh, so we want to pray for them. And, um, and, you know, that's a time when you need comfort and you need the Lord to give you strength and, and make it through those times, those tough times. And um, yes, then uh, third thing, I knew there were three things. Wives are helpful. <laughs> uh, when I'm thinking, okay, what's the third thing? I just had to look at her and she told me what it was. And that is for anybody who's fighting any kind of sickness or disease in their body. Um, let me tell you this, it's not of God. That's not condemning. That's not uh, uh, condemnation. I'm just telling you the good news, and that is God wants you to have a healed, healthy, and whole body. Amen? Amen? So why don't we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for Pastor Tim and the family, Father, as they travel to Tulsa. I thank you for your safety uh, and blessing over them physically and uh, in their bodies and as they travel in the car. And uh, Father, we just thank you that it be a blessed time, a, a, a great time to see a new grandbaby born. And Father, we pray for Elizabeth in that delivery. Father, there'll be absolutely no complications whatsoever. It'll be a smooth delivery of a beautiful child. Father, easy to take care of, intelligent, uh, <laughs> good looking. Yeah. We thank you for that, Father in the name of Jesus. Bless them, Father, as they go. And Father, um, we also uh, pray for the Sapita family. And Father, we know that uh, it's tough losing a loved one. And we pray, Father, for all of them that you would be their comfort. And Father, uh, what more can we say but bless them, bless their family. In Jesus' name. And Father, those that are uh, fighting off sickness and disease, we know that's not from you, Father. We know that you're the God of healing and health. So we speak to the, every body that needs healing in the name of Jesus, and we command them healed, healthy, and whole. God hasn't changed. He's, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we thank you for that, Father. Just receive that right now in your body. Mm, healing and health. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, there's one more uh, thing that I want to do. If, um, if you have a birthday in the month of August... Can you stand to your feet? And you at home, if you have a birthday in August, stand to your feet. We're going to sing happy birthday. That's great. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, there you go. Another one. <laughs> you popped up at the last minute. All right. Um, I'm not very good at this, but... Uh, I'm going to lead you in happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. 
Happy birthday to you. Praise the Lord. Be blessed. Be blessed. All right. Very good. So I want to talk to you today. And uh, we're not going to get too long with this because we're also going to have uh, communion at the end. But um, I want to draw your attention to Mark chapter 11. This is a, a... This is a uh, book in the Bible that really had an impact in me and really meant a lot and has some truth in it. And we've talked about this. You probably have heard, you know, ministers minister on Mark 11. But I want to just bring out a couple extra things that have to do with Mark 11. This is a story um, of Jesus cursing the fig tree. And we know that um, in verse 14, it says, uh, or no, let's start with uh, 12. And seeing the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, giving a signal that it was supposed to have fruit, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not. And Jesus answered and said unto it, so this is this uh, hypocrite fig tree that was saying, I've got figs for you, but it really had no fruit. And he said, no man eat fruit of thee, hereafter forever and his disciples heard it now look at uh, verse 19 it says and when evening was come he went down out of the city and in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots and peter calling to remembrance said unto him master behold so now this is peter he's he's like Behold, in other words, he's startled. Oh my gosh, look. You would think that guys that walked around with Jesus and saw the miracles and saw the stuff that he did wouldn't be shocked with something like this. But he says, um, Peter calling to remembrance said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering unto them, he said, have faith in God. So that, that's the first step is have faith in God or have the faith like God. Okay. And we're going to take a look and, and delve into this a little bit deeper. But he says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatever, whatsoever he saith. So let's think about this for just a minute. They're walking along and Jesus speaks to this fig tree and curses it. He didn't take an ax to it. He didn't call a tree uh, trimmer place or, or tree removal place. What did he do? He spoke to it. Very important. So the first thing is, he says, uh, and this is very interesting, have faith in God. Okay? And then the second thing he says is to speak to your mountains. A mountain is, can be uh, a problem, an obstacle in your life. I heard a minister one time say, if you knew what was on the other side of the mountain, you'd be more apt to speak to the mountain. And I thought, that was really good. If you knew the victory that's on the other side of the mountain, you'd be more apt to speak 
to your mountains. But he had to speak. He had to say something to it. And he did. Now, but if it, th- this has always been something that's really kind of impressed me with this scriptures that we just read. He's walking along and he says something to that tree. He says, basically, you're done. And if we were watching, we would say, what was that all about? I didn't see anything happening. But the truth of the matter, it says that it began to uh, dry up from the roots. Where we could not see anything happening with our physical eyes, something was beginning to happen. And I I think that when we pray, we're going to see here he talks about praying. He first says speak, but then he says pray. Oftentimes we say And that's the big mistake. We say, I don't see anything happening. I don't see any change. I don't see any victory. See, we're talking about the mountain. We're talking about the problem. We're not talking about the solution. We're talking about the problem. And that's a problem. (laughs) Thank you. He says in verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Here's another truth to this scripture. It says, when you pray, there's a saying that says, uh, seeing is believing, and that's not true. Just ask Thomas about that. He got reprimanded for uh, talking like that when you're talking to the master. Seeing is not believing. There's no faith involved in in seeing uh, 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 the victory. Okay? Believing is seeing. You need to believe it when you pray because when you do, you'll receive what you're praying about. So, I I tend to do something like this. First of all, I make a note of what date I pray for something. Okay? May 25th, I prayed about an issue and I received the answer. Now you say, yeah, well, it's, what's today? Sixth? It's August 6th. Do you have the answer to that? Um, I don't have the manifestation of it maybe right now, but I received it back May 25th. And here's what I do. I'll say, Father, thank you. May 25th, I received whatever, uh, you know, whatever you're believing God for and praying for. So you need to receive it then right then, because if you wait to see it, you won't see it to believe. If you wait to see it to believe, you won't see it. It's, that's how faith works. Faith is receiving it right now because God said it. And and the Bible says that this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will that he hears us. This is uh, 1 John, I believe, uh, let me see. Uh, I think it's in 1 John. I didn't write it down. That's why I'm, I have it by memory. But it says, this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Okay, well, that's the first step. Did God even hear me? You know, you hear people say these kind of things. I don't think God even heard me. And we're going to get to some of the reasons people talk like that, but that's not faith. 
questioning whether God heard you. Did you pray according to his will? One, one problem could be, well, I don't know. Well, that's a problem. Karen had mentioned on your prayer request, what scripture are you standing on? Where did you find it in the word? Okay, because anything that you, any promise you find in the word, you can stand on. If God did it for someone else, he'll do it for you. But if you're just like, I just heard a minister uh, preaching the other day and uh, it was Jerry Seville. And he said, uh, I'm careful about agreeing in prayer. Somebody came up to me one time, this couple, and said, uh, Brother Jerry, will you agree with us? And he said, well, what is it that you want me to agree with? And this is what they said. Well, she's married, I believe it was the woman, was married, or no, let me back up. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> um, we want to get married. He says, well, what do you need the agreement for, my agreement for that? Well, she's married, and we're, we want to believe that God will... Um, lead her husband to release her from that marriage. Wait a second. <laughs> I, I, I haven't found that one yet. You know what I'm saying? So people say some crazy things, okay? And I say crazy if, if I don't mean to insult you if you've ever <laughs> thought of kind of weird things like that, you know? I mean, but the truth of the matter is, you know, I heard one time uh, somebody said, uh, to uh, Brother Hagen, that um, they were believing that uh, he was going to give them his car. He said, I'm not giving you my car. You know, he goes, yeah, but I've been confessing it. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> See, the enemy likes to get people messed up on the scripture. You know what I mean? And thinking carnal and thinking, you know, uh, that, no, no. If it's in the word, if you see the promise in the word, then you can claim that promise in your life. God's no respecter of persons, doesn't just work for a minister or, or anybody uh, specific. If it's in the word he'll, or he's done it, doing it for somebody else, he'll do it for you. That's just the way it is. So, at any rate... Um, so praying according to his will, he hears us. And, and this is the confidence that we have. If we know he hears us because it's his will, he'll give you what you've asked for. If you wait around and say, well, when I see that happen, then I'll, you know, thank him and believe and, you know. No, that's, you got it backwards. You, you can't do it like that. You have to, at what point are we going to believe what he says? You know what I'm saying? I mean, if God has said it in the word, at what point do, do, are you going to believe what he said? Sometimes people pick up a newspaper and they'll read that newspaper and that's gospel truth to them. And they'll go and they'll tell somebody else, yeah, I read that in the newspaper or I read it online. And, you know, that's a little different. If it's online, it's got to be true. But, <laughs> seriously, people sometimes take that kind of information more serious than they do the Word of God. At what point are you going to believe what he says? And you got to take that and you got to believe what he said before you see it. There's no faith in... I'll believe it when I see it. And like I said, Thomas found that out the hard way. He got, he, he got uh, schooled by Jesus. So, at any rate, when we pray, we know that if we're praying according to his will, he's heard us and he'll give us, if we'll not doubt in our heart, can you put that back up? It says, uh, oh, uh, no, I'm sorry, Mark uh, 11, uh, what would it be, 24. 
Therefore, uh, 23. Shall not doubt in your heart. The word doubt here in the Greek means to vacillate. And, you know, we've heard that like wavering, you know, that don't think you can expect anything from God if, yeah, maybe he will. Now, you know what? It doesn't look like it's happening. No, that's vacillating. That's doubting in your heart. You got you to gotta convince, be convinced that if God said it, I don't care about anything else. I believe it. And when you get to that point, that's when you're walking in faith, believing the word of God, is when you're not doubting in your heart, but you're believing that the things according to his will that you're praying for, you will have. Now, we have all seen people that didn't get their prayers answered. I made a decision a long time ago when uh, this, I was a f- new Christian and the Lord showed me that if I judge his word against what I see in someone else and in their life and what they did or didn't get or did or didn't happen in their life, that was wrong. So I made a decision a long time ago. I will not affect, I don't care if it's the Pope, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 it doesn't matter to me who the individual is. If I see something that's contrary to the word of God, I work hard not to let that affect me. Is it easy? No, it's not always easy. There's times when you see something that's taken place and you think in the natural, oh my gosh, if, if that happened to that person, is there hope for me? You know what the answer is? Yes, <laughs> there is. Don't be moved by anything that you see in another human being. You don't know everything. Unfortunately, things happen that, that aren't great, but I have to then go back to the truth of, do I believe this word or am I going to vacillate? well, you know what, I saw that person. Yeah, but God said, yeah, but I saw that. No, that's doubting in your heart, vacillating back and forth. And, and that will not get you results. Amen? Amen? So he says to receive, don't doubt in your heart, backing up, speak it, have faith in God, have faith in what he said. Know this, that if I say it, and it's the word, and it's his will, and I don't doubt in my heart, that it shall come to pass. And I'll see, will it happen by next Tuesday? Maybe not. But don't worry about that. Um, I like what Kenneth Hagin said one time. He said, if you're determined to stand on a promise of God for your life, if you're determined that you'll go your whole life standing on the word, if it took that long, you might say, well, what good's that? (laughs) I don't know. That's just my example. But he said, or his example, if, if you get to a point where you don't care how long it will take, I, I'm not going to be moved by how long something might take. He said, you'll find that things come quicker. Because not that you conned God. Yeah, God, uh, I don't really care. No, that doesn't work. But if you determine that in your heart, I don't care how long it takes. It doesn't matter to me. That's going back to, I believe this word. And that's the bottom line. And if you get to that point, things tend to move a little quicker because you're having faith in God. Don't talk about the mountain. Don't talk about, and and that doesn't mean I can't ever say anything negative. No, a lot of times people will 
all, that's all they'll do. Oh, I'm so broke that I can't even pay attention. You know, don't say that. Don't talk like that about your finances. And like Rachel said, be a good steward. Because, and, and if you give, the Bible says that God will supply your needs. And I've proven them in, in this. <laughs> He's done great things for us. But, but, and you know what? I'm totally convinced, even if I ha didn't get a, a call for, I have my own business, if I didn't get a call for the next, well, I already have jobs waiting, just waiting to be done. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's a good thing. Um, they're waiting for me. <laughs> anyway, but if I didn't receive a call for two, three weeks, I still, I won't feel good, but I'll still go to the truth of, Lord, you supply my need. You've proven it to me. It doesn't matter. I'm not moved by that. Amen. And, and that's when you get to believe in him and trusting him like that in an area. Like I said, sometimes I will finish jobs and then all of a sudden that the enemy whispers in your ear, you know, the little guy on your shoulder with the pitchfork. <laughs> no, but he says, well, you know, you're finishing up this job and I don't see any other jobs in the horizon. I'm telling you, what, what do I do? Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm getting nervous. God, please, God, please. No, that's the wrong thing to do. Please, God, you see the mountain. The mountain's big. No, I say, my God supplies all of my need. He supplies every bit of my need. He doesn't leave me without uh, uh, income. And you know what? It never fails. I get a, a phone call or an email or something asking, you know, come and give me a quote on this or that. I'm telling you, when we had, Karen had a, her own business that we ran out of our home, they would constantly, one of our biggest clients would constantly say, there's no more money. There's, they're talking about cutting back. They don't, this, that, and the other. That might have been the natural, you know, thing that they were hearing. But we used to just say, you know what? They're not our source. God's our source. And then I remember specifically this one time. We, we had to stand. Does it affect you? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you got to stand. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like, oh, that, you know, I don't even, they're lying to me. No, no, you, you know, you got to stand against it. But we stood against it and said, God's our source. They're not our source. And, and then listen to this. They called that week and, uh, on, on like a Friday and said, um, we're really in a bind. We need you to work on Saturday on a project and we'll pay you double time. <laughs> and we're like, God, you're so good, you know? But had we gone into, oh my gosh, they're talking about cutting back and cutting the budget and doing all this stuff, they would have been in our hearts our source. But they're not our source. God's our source. And as long as I'm being faithful and giving and doing what I'm supposed to do, God's my source, and I've never lacked. He's always been there. Ha has it ever gotten a little slim at times? Yeah, very temporary. God's my source. I know that, and I believe it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, I've taken this, these truths and applied them to where the rubber meets the road. Not everything. I'm not, I'm not saying that I have never had a challenge in my faith. I, I'm not saying that. But I am saying that certain things that I've learned, 
even when the pressure is on, what comes out of your mouth? What are you saying? What are you speaking? I'm speaking the word. I've already been convinced I'm going to speak the word no matter what it says, no matter what people say, no matter what the circumstances say. And I'll tell you, quite honestly, about a week or two ago, I started thinking because there's so much you know, noise about recession and all this stuff like that. I started thinking, oh, what if work dries up? And I'm like, no, wait, wait, whoa, what am I doing? God's my source. It doesn't matter what the uh, recession looked like. God's my source. See, I had to snap out of it. I had to get back on the word. And then you know what it does? It brings you peace and it brings you calmness. What does, what does meditating on the mountain do? brings you fear. I've been there. I've meditated on the mountain before. And guess what? No more fear. Mm -mm. I'm going to stand on the word. Amen? Now, I said all that to say this. Some, this is what I feel like the Lord has impressed me to talk about this for. There's, there's people that say, that can say, yeah, but I, I'm feel, I feel condemned. I feel like God doesn't, can't bless me because of what I've done or what I've said or what I've thought or, you know, fill in the blank. The devil's mean. He wants to lie to you. He lied to Jesus. Don't think that he wouldn't lie to you or me. He's lied to the master. When Jesus uh, was in the desert, he tried to convince him to veer off the word. And what did Jesus do? He constantly brought it back to the word. Constantly. And it says, then the devil left him for a more opportune time. He'll come back around, but if you keep the word is what you say, and not the problems, and not the issues. He'll leave you. And, and that brought Jesus the victory. Why would I think anything less than that's what I need to do? I don't. I know. This, is, this book right here is my victory. And it's yours too. So, people might say, yeah, but I just have a hard time because I've, I've done this, that, or the other. I have good news for you. Number one, Jesus Christ has defeated the devil. The devil's the one that's lying, the enemy, remember? He's the one that's lying to you, that's saying, because of what you did, God can't bless you. Because of what you said, God can't bless you. I don't know who needs to hear this, but God's mercy endures forever. 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 God is merciful. So when, when that scripture was, went off on the inside of me about his mercy, and I like that, um, how the song, it says... Uh, uh, yeah, and and um, and his power. Did he lose his power? No. Did his mercy change? No. The word mercy in the Old Testament in in Psalms, Psalms one thirty six, verse one. That word mercy means goodness and kindness. You know how we say God is good? It's true. I just proved it by looking that up, that his mercy is his goodness. His mercy is his kindness. Can you put that up, Nick? Uh, Psalm 136, 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, 
and his mercy for his mercy endureth forever. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've said. I don't care what you've thought. God is merciful. He's kind and good to you if you'll receive it. And there's people in the Bible that God, see, sin is messy. Life is messy. It can, it can be very messy. But look at the prodigal. God came to him in the hog pen. God's not afraid of coming and getting messy when we need him to. His mercy endured forever, endures forever. He got into the hog pen, if you will, with the prodigal. And he straightened things out. And that was a, a sign of like us in sin and God, the Father. He's forgiving. He's merciful. The Father with open arms, received the son back. But the son had to come to himself, as the Bible says. Had to make a decision. You know what? I have done a lot of bad things. I have wasted a lot of my inheritance, or all of it, or whatever. I have treated my father and his you know, blessing to me wrong. But he came to himself. God met him in the hog pen. God's not afraid to get involved in yours and my mess. Because his mercy endures forever. He's not afraid of that. Look at Zacchaeus. This was a guy who people hated. Why? Because he ripped them off. He was a tax collector. He stole from them. They hated him. And what could they do about it? They could do nothing except pay the man. But God got involved in his life too, in his mess, in his cheating. And look, it, it turned him around. God's mercy endures forever. The woman caught in adultery, same thing. Where's the man though? I don't know. But uh, it says they, that they caught her in the act. <laughs> well, if they caught her in the act, there must have been a man involved. <laughs> but they gave him a pass. I almost said something political, but I'm not going to. Anyway, God's good. His mercy, God is good, and his mercy endures forever. How many of us in this room have ever needed his mercy, his goodness, his kindness. All of us will have a, 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 a line up here shortly for those that didn't raise their hand for lying. But uh, <laughs> we'll pray for you. We'll get you straightened out. God gets involved in messy things. Now, everybody raised their hand. But because that's truth and God's mercy, he's good, he's merciful even when we do things that we chose to do that we knew we shouldn't do. God's merciful. He's, it, the Bible says that he's faithful. If we'll confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from that unrighteousness. Yeah, but I'm sick and, uh, you know, I've sinned or, or I, whatever, whatever the situation is. I have good news for you. In the book of James, it says, call on the elders of the church. Let them anoint you with oil. It says, if you've committed any sins, he'll forgive you. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Why? Because his mercy endures forever. God's not afraid to get involved in our messes. He understands. Now, should you play with that and mess around with that? No. That's a, that's a dangerous mistake. But if you find yourself not able to 
stand on the word, not able to believe God for what you need because of condemnation. See, that's the thing about the devil. He'll tempt you, he'll tempt you, he'll tempt you. Then you do it and then he puts his foot on your neck and says, see, you're worthless. You're no good. Look what you did. He's a rat. I don't call him a rascal because I used to watch the little rascals and they were naughty, but he's a rat. He's a dirty rat. But I have good news. God's mercy endures forever. His kindness, his goodness. He forgives us. We just need to come to him and confess it because there's no better place to be in than no condemnation in your heart and able to stand on the word of God. Amen? God is good and his mercy endures forever. So we're going to receive or, or uh, uh, take communion now. And I want to talk briefly just about what's happening here. You see, our receiving the cup and the bread is predicated on what he did, not us, not our goodness, not our shedding of blood, but the covenant we have with the Father. It comes through the blood that was shed by Jesus. Well, how do we access that? By faith. By receiving Jesus as our Lord, as our Savior. It was his blood that brought us into that covenant with the Father. And that's holy blood. That's non-tainted blood. So when we receive the cup and the bread, Jesus is the one who shed the blood. And we're just coming in on the coattails of Jesus. And everything that God's word says we can have, we can have because of a blood covenant that was made and that blood was the blood of Jesus. And we enter in on it. Isn't that good? So we're going to receive, I'll, I'll read, uh, I always thought this was remarkable too. This is the Apostle Paul. He didn't walk with Jesus. The Apostle Paul, when Jesus was on the earth, was against Jesus. But yet he's the one who got this revelation about communion, about the Lord's Supper. He says, for I have received of the Lord. He got this through revelation, not through experience. That which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. says, after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament or the new covenant in my blood. It was his blood that we entered in to this covenant with God. With his blood. Our blood couldn't do it, but his blood could. And so he says, um, this do ye as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Oh, Father, thank you. We thank you, Father, for Jesus. We thank you for the covenant that we possess because of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that the promises of God are ours because of Jesus and the blood he shed and his death, burial, and resurrection. 
thank you so much. You're so good to us, Father. Your mercy truly does endure forever. We love you. We thank you. Father, I thank you that no more condemnation. All we need to do is confess our sin to you and you are faithful and just to forgive us. Thank you. It doesn't hold back healing. It doesn't hold back blessing. If we'll come before you and receive that forgiveness that Jesus provided on the cross, thank you, thank you, thank you. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, our final song for tonight will be Above All. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you and praise you. Thank you for Jesus, what he did for us. Oh, Father, we're indebted to you, our Savior, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father, that your word is truth. It hasn't lost its power. You haven't lost your mercy or stopped being merciful and kind. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blessing, your word. We stand on it, Father. We trust you and we give you the glory. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. amen.